We know that McElroy's form is unmatched right now. He's got, I think, six straight top five finishes, hasn't finished outside the top five since September. So the, the current form, unreal. But he's also got a good track record at this course because this will be Rory's sixth time at this event. He has finished worse in 11th just once. That was back in 2016, and that really bad finish was 27th. Since then, Rory has been 4th. First and sixth. That win came in 2018 when he shot a 64, uh, just a couple of strokes uh, off the course record. So he's white hot. He kills his course. The stats are elite. Any reasons for trepidation for you with Rory McElroy? Uh, so, first, any concerns about Rory? No. <laughs> just, I mean, no. He's been so good uh, for so long, he's been so consistent. Uh, he scores fantasy points. Uh, he is always in contention for a win. Whether he converts on that win is uh, another conversation, but uh, really no no issues with Rory. He really stands out, and uh, I'm very much okay fading the most expensive, most popular, the, the favorite golfer of the week very often. With Rory, it's been so hard because right. he does everything. Right. Uh, he just is always in the mix. So no... No real issues with Rory. Let's stick with Rory for here for a second. How heavy can you see yourself being in tournaments? So, because uh, my think, guess is he'll be forty-five percent in most large field tournaments. Yeah, I'd be overweight on that. Yeah, I would uh, too. He, he's going to be on the majority of my lineups. Uh, his cut odds uh, skyrocket. I mean, they're always effectively the highest in in, in any field uh, because of his consistency and and just his prowess overall. But uh, you throw that into a smaller field. Right. Uh, the the leverage you might gain uh, from fading someone like Rory, uh, it goes down as the field gets smaller and his yeah. cutouts go up.